So this is one very important barrier. We know we don't we do take don't think it's a barrier or we're not we take it for granted. But your skin is an important physical barrier to prevent all that disgusting bacteria from actually getting into your system. So this is why it's important to maintain your skin. And skin is a protective barrier. If you're here for fill one for one, you know that even just like the epidermis itself has multiple layers, but you also have the dermis below that and the subcutaneous layer. But your skin is a thick barrier that prevents all these bacteria up here from getting down into your blood vessels and all of this nutrition stuff that they would love to gobble up. But since you have that, again, you have all the keratin, your stratum corneum, that kind of performs a protective layer that helps to pre prevent bacteria from infecting your body. Now, a lot of us are probably using this and what's happening here. So things like if you're using so much of this hand sanitizer and the thing about hand sanitizer, it has like it has alcohols. It has isopropyl alcohol or ethyl alcohol. Basically, what these can do is strip the oils and they can dissolve the oils in your skin. And if you have a lack of oils in your skin, well, the oils also help to maintain the structure of your skin. So if you keep on using hand sanitizer to the point it burns like this person over here, it's going to cause little cracks. And what happens if you kind of crack that structure of your skin? Well, all that bacteria can get in there and potentially infect it. So again, if you're using too much of the sanitizer to the point that dries and makes your skin brittle, maybe lay off on it and maybe work, use a less harsh detergent when you wash your hands. So wash your hands more often, maybe rely on the alcohol a little less often. Now, mucosae are layers of, so what we have, where do we have mucosae? Well, we have them in our oral cavity, we have them in our gut, and we also have them in our reproductive system. So these are all linings of these areas that are exposed to the environment. So again, all these things like that can enter your mouth, they can also enter your gut, and you also have openings of our reproductive system to the outside environment. So what, why, why do I talk about muco mucosae? Well, they produce things called secretions. And these are chemicals and molecules your body produces naturally to defend itself and also maintain these linings. So what, like mucus, this is a type of secretion we're all very familiar with. And not unsurprisingly, they have a substance called mucins, which are thickening glycoproteins, enzymes, and defensins. We'll cover that real soon. And also tears. Believe it or not, tears are a secretion and they are they have antimicrobial properties. So they have like a lysozyme, which is a type of enzyme that help that kind of makes it ho a hostile environment for bacteria. You also have mucins as well. So not as thick as the R mucus in our nose and in our mouth, but there are there is some mucus mucins surfactants. This helps the tears spread across your eyes as well and helps to dissolve lipids in your tears. And But let's talk about mucus. So mucus kind of works in terms of defense, works like a sticky trap. So we did briefly touch upon mucus and all the goblet cells and the cilia and your respiratory system that helps to move up mucus in your respiratory tract and out of your body. Well, it kind of works like a sticky trap in a way in terms of immune defenses. So all these are like little pathogens or dust particles or things that can cause disease. And your mucus helps to kind of slow it down or trap these particles. And the thing is that they can also neutralize pathogens as well. So mucus is more than just something we just blow into a Kleenex. It's actually important defensive layer to your, of your, the linings of your body. Now mucins, these are glycoproteins and they thicken extracellular fluid. So how do they do that? Well, glycoproteins, so we have protein in it. So this part right here, this purple part, this is a polypeptide, this is a protein. But all these little red branches, now glyco is a root word meaning sugar. So these are special types of sugars that are linked together with chemical bonds and they branch off like this. Now sugar likes water. If you've ever had like cotton candy and when we used to have carnivals <laughs> before the, yeah, in the before times, what would happen if, if you've been in a car, like the Punahou carnival or any carnival here in Hawaii, what happens if you carry cotton candy around? Well, it starts to attract all the moisture from the environment and starts getting these little beads where it starts getting you know, melting and getting hard. That's because again, sugar is very attracted to water and vice versa. 
So all these glycoproteins and all this carbohydrates, they help to attract water and retain it. So it kind of makes a like gel-like substance. This is one of the things that help to thicken mucus. And why? Because like think about it this way. Is it easier to swim through water or if you're swimming through like a bunch of syrup or jello or something very thick? So mucins help to make your the mucus very viscous. So by making a liquid viscous, it makes it more sticky, able to trap things, but also prevents the movement of particles like bacteria or pathogens through your body. Now other secretions. So here we have sweat. So what about sweat? So sweat is more than just a way to cool off. It also has an acidic pH. So by being acidic, it also makes the environment ho more hostile to potentially pathogenic bacteria and other microbes. It also, if you've taken, I mean, if you've worked out enough and had a sw sweat roll down your forehead and into your mouth, you know that sweat is salty and it has a high salt concentration. So what is hypertonic to microbes? Again, with, remember in terms of osmosis, things move from a low or Thing, water is drawn to a higher concentration of solute. So if you have a very salty solution surrounding these microbes, it's going to suck the water out of these microbes and cause them to either, either impede their growth or kill these microbes. And defensins, these are antimicrobial proteins. So your, your body can produce proteins that actually attack bacteria and other microbes that can be pathogenic. And dermocidin, uh, we don't worry too much about going into detail, but no, this is yet another type of enzyme that your body makes and can defense, defend your body against um, microbes. So what about defensins? Well, what we have here is a membrane and we have all these defensins and these defensins can integrate. What they can do is kind of like make a little hole in this membrane. So they can actually wedge themselves between the phospholipids that make up a membrane and by wedging themselves in that membrane layer they can open up these little pores now what happens if this is also where it becomes very important to talk about membrane structure itself and this is why you've, you've been hearing so many people over the past year talk about washing your hands well the thing is that detergents are if you remember the phospholipids they're what we call amphipathic they have a hydrophilic and a hydrophobic side so the little heads here these are hydrophilic, they like being facing the water, and the hydrophobic, they are scared of the water, they like to hang out with each other, so this is why you have the hydrophobic layer here. Now detergents are interesting because they both are hydrophilic and hydrophobic itself. So the cool thing is that a detergent, since it has both the hydrophilic side and the hydrophobic side, detergents can actually in integrate with this uh, membrane and kind of disrupt the membrane and kind of like break it apart just by being able to both dissolve in water but also associate with the hydrophobic parts of a membrane. And this is how why you have to wash your hands because the thing about these viruses and not just the coronavirus but many other viruses they have they need some sort of membrane as well. So or on this will wait for certain viruses they have a membrane some might need have actually a protein coat but in terms of like the viruses that have a membrane envelope, what we have here is that this, these detergents can actually in, wedge themselves in the viral membrane and help to dissolve it as well. So it's not just coronavirus, but all the, many other viruses can be disrupted by a detergent. So, and if you've seen these mice cells, yeah, if you've, I think, was it? Um, I think I've, I, I've never used like waterproof makeup, but I think it's like for makeup removers, sometimes they actually use this. And the thing is that if they're waterproof, why is it waterproof? Well, it has a hydrophobic properties that prevent it from washing off with water. But if you have something that's both hydrophilic and hydrophobic, that can actually mix in with the hydrophobic parts and help wash away that hydrophobic mixture that's kind of protecting your skin. So that's why my cells are kind of important. All right, so then the other thing is that things like alcohol, these can help to dissolve membranes as well. So that's why these hand sanitizer that have these very high alcohol percentages are very useful in kind of like disrupting and kind of breaking apart these viral particles or bacteria as well. And yeah, the thing is that you have to be careful because you need a certain percentage of this alcohol. 
if you dilute it too much, like what this person was suggesting, when you have the try to make your own at home, you have to kind of use this high percentage alcohol as your base. You shouldn't start off with the 70% because if you take 70% and then add more of like aloe lotion or water or what else, it's going to dilute your alcohol percentage below 70% and below 60%, I think the minimum is 60. So if you dilute it to below that, that'll make your hand sanitizer less effective than the original formulations that have between 60 and 70% alcohol. So again, be very careful and make sure <laughs> You, this is why it's important to know your chemistry and know how to mix these solutions because again you could make something that's not quite as effective as the actual disinfectants. So again, but the thing is like if you don't want to mess with chemistry, what do you do? You just disrupt the membranes with detergent. So again, this is why wash your hands and also use soap in washing your hands as well. Okay, so then defensins, they're kind of like they're your body's natural detergents. They help to disrupt these membranes of pathogens. And what we have here is a bacterium and say where this is a pathogenic bacteria and your body wants to get rid of it. Well, say this factor is vulnerable to the defensins. These defensins can integrate with the plasma membrane of this, or the membrane of this bacteria. And by integrating into the membrane of the bacteria, it's going to poke these little holes. So if you, what happens is that now the bacteria is, pro, pro, is, um, is vulnerable to all the water and rushing into this cell. So if you have all this water kind of rushing into the inside of this bacterium, what's going to happen? This bacterium is going to burst like a bubble and then it's going to die. So again, the defensins help to protect your body by basically just poking all these holes in the pathogen's membrane.